point where they're trying to find both themselves and also express a political identity. I don't think that it is fully determined yet. I think it is more like a search that is taking place. And I also believe that, to me, it was very, very important to talk about uh, the sensitivities and the, perhaps also the closeness or the awkwardness also that exists also in political terms between the generations. And I think uh, in this case, for example, there is a, also a disappointment that is clearly there when it comes to a lack of commitment. And maybe we could just uh, go beyond that and try to work together in order to uh, solve these urgent questions. And to the second point, uh, France and Germany, I'm uh, actually, I have both identities, French and German. I do know, uh, and I actually grew up directly at the border there. Germans are our immediate neighbors. So I'm very much aware of these cliches that exist. Uh, but there's also another image of uh, Germany, of a sexy and alternative Germany. I do believe that French people actually are not very aware of uh, what's going on in the former eastern parts of Germany, the former GDR uh, regions of Germany. And I do believe that this cliché, the, the kind of cliché that exists between our involving our, both our con, uh, cultures, really. And I think that uh, this is something that has to be broken, and this is something that I wanted to deal with. Yes, Nina, you speak very well uh, French. In your youth, did you engage in an exchange between France and Germany? As you wish. <laughs> I was never on a student exchange, and I come from Stuttgart originally, close to the French border, and I was very often in Strasbourg, and the Alsace region, I loved French, the French chanson genre, always, I always looked uh, uh, towards the French culture and tried to gain a proximity to it, I'm still fascinated by it, but I was never part of a student exchange properly. <laughs> Question from uh, reporter in Leipzig. A question to Nina. Last year in Dresden, this time in, uh, in Leipzig, what is better? I come from uh, Dresden, but I've been living for 40 years now in Leipzig and at Josefa, for, to Josefa and Lilith. How did you like Leipzig and Claire? Why did you choose Leipzig in the first place? You could have chosen Cologne, Cologne or any other place. I can't really answer that question as to what is better really. I had great experiences in both towns. I think the atmosphere, the mood is somehow different. Dresden is more sort of regal, a bit more uh, Baroque as well, at least in the area where we were, in the center of town. And Leipzig is uh, more vivid, more vivacious as well. But I know that if you go out in Dresden, you can also find uh, lively places. So I can't really answer that question. I can only say that I had a good time in Leipzig. And I was mainly in the area of uh, the train station, so I'm, I really know that area well now. I've been living in Leipzig for the past two and a half years, and I love Leipzig. Many young people there, there's a lot of culture. There's a lot of... Also viele politische Gruppen auch und, um, there are many political groups there and demonstrations that take place, so it is a very lively city. And actually, uh, the scenery is very beautiful too. Do you wish to comment? Yes. What I most saw actually in Leipzig was my hotel room in the evenings after the shoot. No, but apart from that, I can, tell, I can say that I did walk around and I can also... Uh, uh, confirm that there's a, a, a new avant-garde architecture that is rising there. That's very, very interesting. So you speak German much better than the character you play in the film. Any other questions? Yes, I'll speak uh, French, if you allow. I chose Leipzig because uh, this was a suggestion by Roman, who said, uh, that's an interesting city, and he got me 
interested in it. I thought that it, uh, you know, just like everybody could go, I could go and shoot in Berlin, but it, in the end I gave up that idea because I then looked at Leipzig, I saw it was kind of like a new and upcoming Berlin and I did some research and also saw that the Monday demonstrations that brought down the Berlin Wall had actually started there. And there's perhaps still an element there that resists the uh, evolution of time and also speaks to the effects of ultra-liberalism uh, and the fall of the Berlin Wall and what remains of that heritage of the uh, GDR. And perhaps also speaking to the difficulties that uh, left-wing politics are experiencing nowadays in Saxony vis-à-vis -vis the rise of right-wing populism. And coming from the border between Germany and France, I was also interested in working in an area in Germany that I was not familiar with. So I did not know Eastern Germany well. I thought that idea of exposing myself to that was very, very interesting. And as a French, to really come to Eastern Germany, um, that was a challenge. I'm much uh, better uh, familiar or much more familiar with Bavaria than Eastern Germany. Yes, further questions, please. Yes, we can hear you. Question in French. Grandezzo Federico, Giornale Italia. A question for Claire. Do you believe that increasingly we can see that cinema is turning towards political topics, that we are effectively witnessing a context of war in different regions? And do you believe that there is a, 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 a mounting trend or an increasing trend of uh, cinema, uh, filmmakers to turn towards those topics. Well, I do believe that that is not easily uh, to shoot. Everything that is more theoretical is much more difficult. And what I try to do is to give it almost a sensual texture, to make it palpable, politics that is. I do not believe in making a, a political film, a propaganda film. I don't look at that really. It's a much more a film about uh, soul-searching, belief, uh, and the uh, beginning of desire as well. I don't know whether it's really a film about politics in that sense, but I do believe that uh, there are many people who believe that art is essentially political and who wish to make very committed films. Uh, maybe uh, Marie-Ange can come in here and I can't really uh, speak to that, but uh, the film productions that I'm engaged in very often are uh, political. And uh, I had this film that was uh, set in the uh, 90s, and there's also this film that is uh, about society today. So it's not a political film in sort of the original cells of the world, but I, word, but I do believe that it is. it has a political vocation and it is about youth. And I do believe that there's also an interest taken in society and the context in which we li live. The, uh, and there's also plenty of traces of the world in which we live in this film. Carlos Love from Spain. Carlos Love. Thank you very much for this very beautiful movie. I love uh, César Lamour. Uh, I would love to speak better French, but I cannot say more than that. Um, I have some questions. The first for Jalal, we haven't heard him. Uh, all the characters are struggling for some other reasons. Um, he also, but he's all, like calm. I like that, his character, like in situations with a lot of stress, he managed that. And I was wondering, uh, what do you think about your own character? Um, and then for the two main protagonists, this is a huge cliche, one of these questions that always come, but there is a very good chemistry between you. Um, this is not always in every movie, so I was wondering how you prepare that. And then third, sorry, uh, just for the director, um, the decision making in some topics in the movie. I like that a lot. In some topics you are more on the surface, in some others you go deeper. Like in the bullying, which is a super important topic, and they never talk between each other about that. And, and I, I like that. Real life is like that sometimes. We don't talk about everything. So, thank you. Voilà. <laughs> um, first of all, 
This is my first uh, feature film in French. And I first of foremost would like to thank Claire. She really gave me this self-confidence and instilled that in me to make this film. And I had already worked with, uh, uh, and I like working with uh, Marie-Ange and uh, Claire. I think that their work is very, very interesting. And their way of looking at it is also interesting. She's always looking for love in the film. And to me, that is a strong commitment to go even further, even perhaps beyond love, the love that, in, in a conventional sense, that it is also, or that it reaches as far as a political commitment. Also, when it comes to climate change, when it comes to my own uh, character, it's a bit uh, the exact opposite of uh, who I am in real life, because I was part of the revolution in Syria. And here we have a, a character who doesn't dare go beyond uh, certain boundaries, a certain vision he has of life. But he has this very particular relationship with his daughter, and obviously with his wife. And the way we worked this character is we had this conversation going on with Claire and there was a fine line that we tried to keep to not fall into cliches of confrontation between two generations, the children and the parents. And that is also something that uh, I was uh, very much uh, focused on because it's essential to this character. Antar, thank you very much, Claire. Thank you, Claire and Marie. I love you. Thank you. Should I start? Maybe? Um, how, did, how did you get that chemistry and that proximity across? How did you work that? This is a, a hard question to answer uh, because I feel like it's not something you have control on. Um, but um, yeah, uh, Josef has a, a very sensitive soul, and I really admired her uh, from the beginning on. So I think yeah, I learned so much from her, and also watching her having this first experience as an actress was very moving, touching to me. Um, I believe that we also talked a lot in preparation of the film in order to prepare our roles. At the beginning, given that this was my very, very first feature film, she really took me by the hand and explained how everything worked who had what role on the set. And obviously we also spent a lot of time together during this entire time. Yes, and um, something that really helped me also, aside from the fact that Lilith has experience on the set and as an actress and knows exactly how and what she needs on the set in order to prepare well, it also helped me that Lilith is an excellent actress and she's a wonderful counterpart. So all of that helped. I'll try to keep it very brief. There are several topics that are touched upon in the film. I wanted to touch on many levels there, but first and foremost, it was a film of love. It's a love film. At the beginning, I thought of making a film about friendship, and then it evolved. It really transformed and gravitated towards this love story. And all of the things that I wanted to uh, work on, I spent a lot of time working on the script together with Marie-Ange. We worked on it in order to try and find the main topics that I could work on and at the same time also touch as many topics as I wanted to touch upon. And many things that I wanted to speak about. Yes, congratulations. I can't speak uh, French, so I'll stick to German. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed the film. Georgia Film Review from Georgia. My question goes to Claire. Was this a youth film? 
or an adolescent film, a film of coming of age, or was it just a, a normal film? Was it a political film? Was it a love film? A love story. And last question to Josefa. Why did you cry as Lena at the end in your character? Where is it a f love film? Is it a political film? It is a film about desire. About the w and about belief and about the desire to believe, believe, to be able to believe and believing in one's own desire. Uh, do I have to speak in German? No, we have interpreters. And is it a film about youth? Yes. I really wanted to talk about uh, young people today, but in working with Nina, who is and uh, I, I really thought it was also about this confrontation between the generations. It's not that easy, and I really wanted to have that dialogue about between young actresses and more established act actors and actresses, something that could be impressive, how they establish and claim their place within that context. And I think this is also a question that comes up for all of us. I mean, the necessity for generations to work together. In this case, the uh, characters of Nina Hoss and Keras are both also very, very important. So it's not just a film about youth. It doesn't just focus about on young people, but more, mainly also on women. You know, yes, I think that in the end it's up to the audience, the public, to decide why Lena uh, shed some tears at the end there. It wasn't really uh, uh, written down as such in the script, but at the end she does receive this audio message from Fanny that says, I love you, and the fact that she also lied, well, the fact that the tears flow is because this intensive period is over and perhaps also because she can hardly believe that this is happening and perhaps because she harbors doubts also whether they will see each other again or not. And at the end of the day, I think it's this entire tension as well. A lot has happened between Lena and Fanny and this tension falls by the wayside and she's on her way home and she knows, okay, I'm getting back to that, to my mother. And all of that uh, overwhelms her, and then also the political questions, the very last scene that you see in the film. Someone has a quick, simple one. Not a double question. Okay, second row. Yeah, hello. My question is for My question is for Nina Hoss. Could you please explain how did you prepare for this char character? It's, it's so alive and it really uh, <laughs> makes me think of uh, the mother of one of my best friends. So it was really fun to watch that. How did you prepare that? Well, what I really enjoyed uh, about this character, and this is something that Claire already touched upon, is that I have the impression that she herself was once in that place where Josefa, where Lena, uh, the character in the movie, finds herself. And at some point, she somehow lost her path, and it, both in a political sense, but also in life in general. At this point, she does not know where to turn anymore and what all of this means, but she has some kind of uh, joie de vivre. Yes, she enjoys a splash or two, too many sometimes, but that also brings about that she does funny things and reacts in a funny way sometimes. And this is something that Claire was also looking for. I wanted to convey something warm, a warm mother personality, that it wasn't, that it shouldn't be too problematic, but that she somehow also uh, brings a bit some, uh, yes, some turmoil as well in this very tender relationship. And at the same time, she's also overwhelmed with the situation, and that is why the daughter is uh, so. Is, 
takes up so much uh, responsibility upon herself because she feels that she has to take care of her mother. And I think this was wonderful to carve it out together with the rest of the team to really work out what happens with this woman right up to the point where her ex shows up and she misunderstands and misreads the situation completely. It was just a wonderful um, arc in a way. And it was wonderful to Thank you. Look at discover it. Thank you very much. The ultimate example of a French-German friendship. Thank you. Have a beautiful premiere today. Thank, Thank you for you. your presence.